country and labor built the middle class. Country and labor built the middle class. Good evening, I'm your host, Jack Remington of Jack Remington Political Analyst. Today is week four of the Joe Biden show, February 11th through February 18th. You can see on a screenshot here, the last thing he did on February 4th was the, quote, memorandum on advancing the human rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex persons around the world. And it's, it's February 4th and got the tab for presidential actions. There was no more until February 11th. So, and that one, we'll, we'll start with that one. Uh, the executive order on blocking property with respect to the situation in Burma. I'm going to put this on two separate channels. This is going to definitely be on my political analyst channel. I may have to put this on my crime channel as well because what's the crime? I see something every day on some news feed. A lot of it's Yahoo, M MSNBC, the Alphabet news agencies, CBS, ABC, someone, uh, Huffington Post, someone is publishing this thing about the January 6th insurrection. Now, now let me tell you what the real insurrection was in Myanmar or formerly called Burma. When I was a boy growing up for the first 55 years of my life, it was called Burma. They changed the country's name. It's their country. They can call whatever they want. By the authority vested in me as president by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America, including the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, parentheses 50 USC 1701 et cetera, second parentheses IEEPA, end of parentheses, the National Emergencies Act, 50 US Code 1601 et cetera, NEA, section blah, 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 okay, of the United States Code. I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, find that the situation in relation to Burma, and in particular of the February 1st, 2021 coup, which the military overthrew the democratically elected civilian government of Burma, and unjustly arrested and detained government leaders, politicians, human rights defenders, journalists, and religious leaders, hereby rejecting the will of the people of Burma as expressed in the elections held in November 2020, and undermining the country's democratic transition, and rule of law constitutes an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. I hereby declare a national emergency to deal with that threat. Accordingly, I hereby order, and he goes through section one, A1, A2, A, and then ABC, talks about all the property interests of the United States. I mean, I'll, I'll put the screenshots up here briefly. You can always stop the video and read them if you want to read them. And then on the third page, the government of Burma were on after February 2nd, 2021. And the notice he called it Burma. They didn't even call it Miramar. So, See, they're rushing through these executive orders. They're rushing through this legislation. They're making all kinds of typos that it was never done before. And I don't remember the, in much mistakes. I mean, they must have fired all their proofreaders because they're going broke or, or until they open up the piggy bank again. They, 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 they did that today, by the way. And he goes through section two, section three. I'll, I'll flash these up here and you can stop the video to read these. It goes on and on and on. And section seven, section eight, section nine, section 10, section 11. And nothing in this order shall be construed to impair or otherwise affect. And it's got one, two, three, four, one, two, B, C. This order is not intended intended to and does not create any right or benefit, substantial or procedural, enforceable at law or in equity by any party against the United States, its departments, agencies, or entities, its officers, employees, or agents, or any other person. Joseph R. Biden Jr. Doesn't even put president underneath those, I kind of 15 mistakes, typos that shouldn't be in here. I'm a paralegal. I went, to, I went to paralegal school, University of Maryland, a major law school in that area of that country. Legal writing, I mean, when you work for a law firm and you start at the bottom, like I, like I did, you type the briefs up, you go to the courthouse, you file them, you file the briefs, you get the timestamp, you take it back, you put it in the case file, then the attorney, if he, if he or she decides that we got to do something about it or they let it sit until the trial comes up, it's up to them. Okay, you're working for them. You're their assistant. They don't have time to dot the I's and cross the T's. So long story short, this Joe Biden, not one of those pages that, that I just put on the screen here, where you see the word insurrection. Because this thing here, they called it a coup in the opening statement here. Okay, And yes, it was a coup. And yes, they are correct. But it was really an insurrection as well. And that insurrection, there's been, and I understand there's been people that's died over there because of that. I haven't researched that part of it yet, but there's been some deaths over there because of this coup or insurrection. That's a real insurrection where they have a military and they, they arrest all the journalists. They, I mean, this thing that happened January 6th was just a just a melee. It was like a like a rock concert going wrong. Is all that was. The only gunfire. There was one shot fired by a firearm that entire 20 minutes or wherever it was, 16 minutes, wherever it was, is when the Capitol officer panicked and shot that woman, Ashley Babbitt, a U.S. veteran, and shot her in the chest and she died within minutes. Okay. That was the end. There was no, nobody there that was armed. Now, the Washington Post tried to be slick and say that they found someone in the parking lot 
uh, that had it underneath the seat. Well, that was an unrelated matter. That was somebody that was illegally parking somewhere like three miles away in, or in the southeast district of Washington, D.C. Had nothing to do with it, with the January 6th thing. But they had to sneak that in there thinking that the people don't understand that people are not from Washington, D.C. like I am. And people don't know southeast and northwest, uh, west of Rock Creek Park. You're okay. It's where the white people live, where people that got jobs live. The people in the northwest support the other three quadrants in Washington, D.C. And I'm from D.C. I can say that. Now, January 6th, I didn't see not one report. I didn't see not one incident where there was a kidnapping. I didn't see one thing where someone, some girl got fondled or got, you know, next to being raped, like the disoccupy Wall Street that happened under Barack Obama's kind of, uh, sort of, well, uh, hinting, uh, uh, encouraging, uh, yeah, well, we need to do something about the inequities of, of, of income and blah, blah, blah. I mean, there were a lot of reports about that, and, they, and the media squashed it. And these people, they, they believe everything the media says. They believe that the orange man was bad. They believe that Donald Trump's the real criminal. Donald Trump was not the criminal. The criminals are in the Democrat Party and they're now in Washington, D.C. It's a complete swamp now. And the Republicans, oh, well, well, well Jack, uh, I heard this last week. Well, you Republicans aren't doing anything. Yeah, because they, they might need to cheat too sometime. What else? What other reason could it be? Okay. And they're afraid of the Democrats. They always have been afraid of the Democrats. I, why? I don't know. Let's go back to the video at hand here before I get, lose my cool here. Notice of the continuation of the national emergency with respect to Libya. Joe Biden's getting pressure from the military industrial complex. Donald Trump parked them, rightfully so, brought the troops home. And all of a sudden, all these, these admirals and generals, all of a sudden, well, that Donald Trump, that piece of shit, he, he is orange man, bad, blah, 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 because they couldn't make any money off him anymore. Donald Trump stopped all that, the waste fraud and the corruption and abuse, he stopped that. And I got the Andrew video about um, the OpenTheBooks.com. He talks about that in detail, about what Donald Trump did to the military industrial complex. And believe me, look what happened to JFK. They, they fight back their way. We found they spent $9,300 on a club leather chair. They spent the million dollars on PBR, the Professional Bull Riders Association. The Pentagon spent down their lobster tail and snow crab budget, spending $4.6 million in the last month on lobster tail and snow crab. And so we dug a little deeper. And when we reached out for comment, the Pentagon admitted to spending $25 million on lobster tail and snow crab over an 18-month period. We also published at the Wall Street Journal an annual figure of what the Pentagon was spending on expensive coffee cups, up to $1,218 on these expensive coffee cups. And Senator Chuck Grassley picked that up, wrote an oversight letter to the Department of Defense, he got the program stopped, but they admitted they had spent $350,000 on that program of expensive coffee cups. And I'd feel a lot better about all of this spending at the Department of Defense if they could pass their audit. The president, it's, the, uh, the audit of the Pentagon's been on the books for decades, but nobody enforced it. Well, President Trump did enforce it. He mandated it. The, the Pentagon spent a year there was 1,200 auditors. They spent $400 million on the audit, and the Pentagon flunked it. We need a transparency revolution. We need to challenge the culture of corruption in Washington, D.C. I just want to close with the, with the following story, and it is good news. <laughs> I received a call two weeks ago from the White House, from the Executive Office of the President, the Office of Management and Budget. And they said that for the first time in our nation's history, included in the President's budget to Congress is a chapter on the elimination of wasteful spending. And they said that our work, our oversight work at openthebooks.com had helped inspire that chapter. They sent me a copy of it, and the President recognized in that chapter, the following, and this is really important, quote, that a bloated, duplicative, and wasteful federal government is a threat to America's future. And that's really good news. We called for a transparency revolution, and in the president's budget to Congress, he commits to oversight resources on every single federal spending program. We called 
for a war on waste, and the president is declaring war on waste. We called for 5% cuts in the agencies, and the president's budget adopted that cut. We called for the elimination of improper payments, and the president is committed to it. We called for the end of use it or lose it, year-end spending. The president cited in his budget our organization by name, bullet pointed our findings, and hyperlinked and footnoted our oversight report on our website. We believe that transparency is revolutionizing United States public policy and politics. Join us, join the transparency revolution. John Bolton, the former security advisor to Donald Trump. Oh, goddamn Donald Trump. Wrote a book about how bad Donald Trump was. But in the end, I guess his better nature and the true nature got to him and said, you know what, I, I got to stop this. Donald Trump did not disparage the troops May 20th of 2018 like they're trying to say at that, at that funeral. That's not true. I got to stop it here. He said, I, I hate Donald Trump. He fired me because I, I never saw a conflict or a war I didn't like. And I, I don't like getting fired. It made me look bad. I am bad. But he's the president. If you don't like how the president handles his foreign policy, which Donald Trump gets A++++ in my book, by the way. If you don't like how the president does things, run for office. Do what Joe Biden did, lie, lie your way, and when they ask you a question, go, huh? Act dumb. People apparently like that. They love that now, don't they? He, didn't, he answered no questions, and he, when he was pressured, I never said I was going to stop fracking. Who said that? You dog-faced pony soldier? You know, I mean, he would just outright, I never talked to my son Hunter about his business dealings. Or, he flew his goddamn airplane to the Air Force Two, and he didn't ask, oh, hi, son, how'd you like a trip to China? Oh, okay, Dad. And so for a 16-hour fight, he just sat there and went to sleep. Really? Okay, well, so on February 14th, President Biden approved Texas Governor Greg Abbott's request for the aid in response to a severe winter storm in the state on February 11th. Millions of Texas lost power due to the storm, and at least 30 have died. And remember, I'm, I'm, I'm still a few weeks behind, so there's been more people that's died. On Monday, the Biden administration reopened Obamacare enrollment. 15 million people that are uninsured could become insured under the Affordable Care Act. I need to stop this video and talk about that really quick. Guess who's going to pay for that? Guess who's going to pay for these 15 million that Obamacare threw over the cliff? You are and I am. That's who's going to pay for that. Okay, I want you to think about that. And I hope Scott Nan is watching this video. On February 16th, Joe Biden did his first town hall as president in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Biden said his administration will secure 600 million COVID-19 doses by the end of July. So that's not what he said when he first took office. Enough doses to vaccinate every single American. I need to stop the video again. Uh, and he blamed, last week he blamed Donald Trump. He said Donald Trump wasted time. No, he didn't. Donald Trump sped that thing by three times. <laughs> That's time warp speed. I need to say it one more time. To make a vaccine, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and I used to do work for them as a contractor when I was at my civil service shop. The, the, they would tell us all, the minimum is going to be three years before we get anything done for the research for the soldiers. And I worked at the Army base for 18 and a half years. Don't tell me I'm wrong. I worked there. I lived it. You can look it up for yourself. Fort Detrick, Maryland, you Sanford, they did research on the vaccines for the soldier in case they didn't need to send some troops to, to Africa to, to combat Ebola and loss of fever. And, and you know what? Ebola came up later on. They need to have the vaccines ready to give it to the soldiers on moments notice. And it was 24 hour seven operation. I made a lot of overtime that way. Now they got these Johnson Johnson, the two other uh, Pfizer, and there's a third company, one I never heard of. They're fighting over the rights of how many vaccines, how can they make their money? It's all about money, folks. And I can't believe the public buying this. I can't believe the people can't see through this, but they can. In January, Biden said Americans could get a vaccine dose by spring. Well, that's not what he said in, in, in January. But Biden said he had to push back the timeline because President Trump, quote, wasted time. The middle class built this country and labor built the middle class. What? I got, I got to stop the thing. I got to look at it one more time. Did he really say this? The middle class built this country and labor built the middle class. I got to say it one more time because I'm trying to understand this. Bear with me, please. The middle class built this country and labor built the middle class. Get to invite close friends into the Oval. <laughs> I was kidding these guys before. This is American labor. And I said from the beginning of my campaign throughout my whole career, the middle class built this country and labor built the middle class. Wow. February 18th, 2021. House Democrats introduced Biden's immigration bill. Oh, my goodness. What a doozy this is going to be. Which will create an eight-year pathway to citizenship for approximately 11 million undocumented people in the United States. Like it's really 11 million. Vice President Kamala Harris held a virtual roundtable to draw attention to women. Leaving the workforce and the economic fallout of the COVID-19 crisis, 
It has created a perfect storm for women. And the longer we wait to act, the harder it will be to bring these women, millions of women back into the workforce. 2.5 million women left the workforce during the COVID-19 crisis compared to 1.8 million men who left the workforce during the same period. Am I thinking wrong about this Kamala Harris again? She's trying to badmouth the system because more women had to leave the workforce because of men, and it's only 600,000 more than the men? Why didn't Kamala Harris say that there's actually more women in the workforce in the first place? Maybe that's why it was, it's going to be pretty close to an equal number to have left the workforce. Why didn't Kamala Harris say that there's more men like me? I work, I'm an essential personnel. Okay, when everybody else got sent home at my W-2 job, me and maybe 18 other people got to work for several months. Kamala Harris is not saying that. There's very few women that actually do work in essential personnel or security services. Okay, it's almost it's a male-dominated field. Okay, Kamala Harris didn't tell you that. It's unfortunate that anybody had to leave the workforce in the first place. So Kamala Harris, why don't you tell people? Why don't you tell Joe Biden like you've been telling everything else? Let's open back up the country. You get everybody back to work. Problem solved just like that. But, but oh no, he can't do that. I'll upset Dr. Fauci. He won't be able to make his TV appearances and get his additional money on top of his $425,000 a year civil service salary. And I'm 18 years civil service. I know how civil service works. So don't try to push me around and say, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. Dr. Fraudy is a fraud. And you can re watch my other video. February 19th, the U.S. officially rejoined the Paris Climate Accord following the executive order Biden signed during his first day in office. In conclusion for this video, Joe Biden, he is so clueless that he doesn't, or maybe he doesn't care about the destruction of the country. You would think he would care about his grandkids and great grandkids, but apparently not. And today's the day uh, he signed that $1.9 trillion stimulus bill that's got $23 billion for his good old buddy, C Cup Grabber Cuomo in New York State, $31 billion for uh, Gruesome Newsom, the governor of California. I forgot to look up Illinois. But those three states, Illinois, New York, and California, between the three of them, it's like $80 billion of unfunded pensions because they let their state, they hired all their relatives to these $200,000 just show up desk jobs like Chelsea Clinton, you know, and just just make the money and uh, there's not enough taxpayers to pay those big bills. And now it's come due, well, no, per, no, no problem, we'll just we'll run up the printing press, we'll strip our country of more wealth. What's our deficit now? For what is, what is our government debt now? How many trillions are we now in debt? What, 34 trillion? We're never going to pay that back. And Barack Obama opened the door with his 10 trillion to bail out the banks. Well, we can't let the banks fail. No one stopped them. No one stopped them. Why? Now I know why they didn't stop them because some of them got money in their pockets, including the Republicans. I mean, this has got to stop. My granddaughter's not going to have a country left. She, anything she does, if she gets a job flipping burgers or doing or digging a ditch or whatever she's going to, she's going to be doing to start out when she's a young kid, we used to call kid jobs, college jobs, starting jobs. She could be lucky to take home ten percent of her check because the other ninety percent is going to do to pay off the debt. Don't you people see what's going on here? And and and, and no one's saying, no one seems to care. No one says a word about it. I got to start making these videos. I'm cutting a lot of my time. I could be doing. I could, I'm cutting my eBay time. I need to make these videos. People got you, you. You have to understand what you've done here. You took the successful businessman out of the equation and put this guy in here. He's got to change his, his depends four or five times a day. Come on, come on, man. Like, like Joe would say, people want power. Politics is power, nothing more. And people don't understand that. They don't. Want, they refuse to believe that. Look, hi there. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. Come here. Say 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 hi to the people. Say hi to the people. Look. Say hi to the people. Well, anyway. So anyway, let me close this video off here. I gotta let the dog outside. So she she knows I'm filming. She knows I'm trying to concentrate. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll get to week five in the next video. Always a great day to be American. Thank you. Have a great day.